Good afternoon. This is Michael Sullivan from PSP. I'm going to walk you through some new suite apps that NetSuite has uh, made available uh, specifically for manufacturing. Um, my background, I worked at NetSuite Direct for eight years doing pre-sales uh, for manufacturing distribution companies and worked for several other large to medium-sized manufacturing Factoring and ERP companies within Europe and North America. I am going to quickly show you the three things that I found that I thought might be of interest. Uh, the first two are definitely sweet apps, cost of bills of material. Uh, and it seems like instead of developing content directly in the manufacturing module, they are just adding sweet apps that are available that you can download that are free of charge. So I'll walk you through cost of bills, material, work order instructions. Uh, in my demo environment, I have work order variance report, um, but it has SDG in front of it, which typically means SDG is the team in the Philippines that develops content for for demos and stuff. So I'm not 100% sure if you can get access to it, but you could ask your uh, account manager at NetSuite to see if you can get it. It's actually a decent little report. So let's look at the three um, different options that NetSuite kind of has available. That's fairly new. I am going to open up Close this, you don't need to see that, and you don't need to see that. And I'm going to start by hiding these floating windows. And first of all, when you are in your demo environment, you go to Sweet Apps or in your live environment or your, you know, your sandbox environment or where you are, um, there's a Sweet Apps option here. And when you type in, you know, whatever you want, Right, the system will find those just like you know, work instructions and work on a travel report, those will show up. And then all you do is you click on them, and you can see mine's being installed. Otherwise, there's an install button. <clears throat> now, most of these do require you to have. If you go to inventory, they require advanced item location configuration to be uh, enabled. Not a bad thing. It's just a different way of looking at your locations and your replenishment information compared to uh, the older way. So again, once you download them, they should show up. For example, one of them will show up under manufacturing for generally traveler. The other one will show up under cost accounting here, cost of bills of material. And like I said, the other one shows up for me under custom here. So that's why I'm not 100% sure if you can get at it. I mean, it doesn't break anything. So you can always ask, uh, again, your account manager for it. So if we look at cost of bills of material for the people that might not know this, but if you go to manufacturing and you do uh, cost of bills of material here, this is the old version of this. It's really not that great. Um, you have to have standard costs set up on your items. Otherwise nothing shows up here. Um, so one of the benefits here is you can pick, you know, what company you're in, what item, uh, what location, It'll then default your bill of material. You can pick if it's by revision. Uh, you can pick the revision. Uh, it'll identify if you have a routing. You can pick the routing. And then you can run this by uh, different ways. So think of for costing method. I think here is just taking whatever my default is on the item record. But this would be, if you ran it by purchase price, right? There's a field on the item record uh, with the purchase price. So it would be using that field for all the material costs. And there's another field on the item record for item defaults. 
same thing. You can put in items. So these are arbitrarily defined uh, item costs. Um, and you could, you know, export your data, you know, put your average cost and then re-import it and fill those. And then once you come in here, you can see these are basically indented bombs. Um, every level that you have will show up. It'll show you the level of the bomb. It'll show you the item, the quantity. If you have any yield factors, the quantity per assembly, quantity per top level assembly, the unit cost here, and it looks like it's going all the way to seven decimal points, the unit to measure, the total cost right, of the item. And then over here, you'll see your total material cost. And then if you go to the other tab here, you'll see your assembly cost, right? You can explode that as well. And you'll see your uh, labor run times that you have, your total cost here. So if you had any labor setup or machine run times, those would show up here. And if we go fully exploded cost, right, you can kind of start to explode this. It takes a second because there's a lot of stuff behind here. All right, and we can kind of explode each one of these together with labor and with, you can see there's labor runtime, there's some machine setup time here. It looks like this assembly does not have a routing. And then you get your total costs here, your total exploded cost at 271. Um, and just think of it, that means like if we go back to material costs, right? That was just materials. That means the labor is 9.49% and the material is 90.51. So if you compare this to the uh, original one, this is a heck of a lot better. So again, go download this. This is actually some of the better stuff I've seen developed in manufacturing for a while. In a regular routing, you could, you could enter, you know, comments. So if we took, you know, this one I'm working on here. Uh, you can see here, you don't really have a work order instruction option, do you, right? You have a component per operation, you have, you know, typical stuff. Now this is new here. This is basically what I'm talking about here, but notice there wasn't really a, a spot to put uh, anything, uh, a large amount of instructions. So that was kind of a problem, right? Advanced manufacturing had that, but you did not have that inside of your standard whip and routing. So what they did is they added an option where to put it, and you can do this directly on the routing. There's also, you know, you can just type in work instructions here and it'll pop up. Uh, together with that, they added a new traveler. So there's also preferences around the traveler. And the idea is that you have new templates available. The report directory is basically the file cabinet location where that, when you print it, the PDF is going to be generated. And then this is if you're using advanced manufacturing, which Hopefully nobody is doing. All right, so the Traveler template is your PDF version here, and you can create your own versions of this or have somebody help you. Um, I'll show you the one that's in the default here. Um, it definitely needs a little bit of work. And then if you look at work instructions, what I did here on one example is I did it for a specific bomb, a specific bill of material, um, and then you can write the sequence in your operations. And what you can do is you can put a URL here. So the idea is that you can print images, uh, but this is very, well, it's not limited, but it has to be a JPEG or a PNG, it has to have a certain color format. Um, here's an example. Now the PDF version I have here, that template does not print this for some reason. 
um, and the recordings show you how to put this thing here, but also don't print them, or they don't show you at least. So I'm guessing that you need to, again, take that Traveler template and make a modification before this image actually pops up. Um, all right, you can put process notes here, you know. This. And you can see my typing skills after only 30 years have not gotten better. All right, and then it does say print image. Wish that happened with the template, but it doesn't. Uh, it does list it to that, and then you can just you know save it. And like I said, you could also access that directly through here if you want to. Now, when you go and uh, print the traveler, you just go down here and you go to generate traveler, and you pick your location. You could pick an item. And you just hit search, right? So it'll just find everything or within the start date range here. I'm just going to do this for one work order that I know is uh, going to generate something. And you could also have a search here. Um, and I printed this earlier, so I'm going to include printed orders. And then it shows, if it shows 20 here, you could select all of those, right? You just do a multi-select and then generate print. Now this takes, I would say probably 30 seconds or so. And then if you go to the file cabinet, it'll pop up too, just so you know, but it will also go right here and then it will generate uh, a traveler. So this traveler definitely looks different than the old ones. All right, it shows a bill of material, which the other ones do not. This Right, the ones that you would found standard manufacturing, a little barcode. Um, it's got my operations, right? My work center, another barcode. It's got my instructions here, right? And everything is there. Now, again, this is obviously where the image should be printing, uh, but anyone that knows the event PDF documents, those are fairly easy to modify if you. Uh, have some technical skill. So that's number two. Um, in reality, what does it give you? Like if you have a complex manufacturing process and you want extended instructions, which might be important, or images, maybe set up of a machine, this would probably not be a bad thing to try to look at. And again, it's for free. You just download it from the App Store. Again, I don't know if this is on the app. It's actually not on the app store. I checked again, um, but you might be able to get access to it. Now, the where, spot where I found this is uh, reports, uh, custom work order variants. Now, this actually should become a sweet app. I mean, if you think of it, this is, it is very difficult to really see the variances or the costing on the work order in general. So I have a work order, this one right here, and I hit submit, and it does take a while. I ran this earlier, but this can take, you know, 30, 45 seconds. So what's nice is that even if you had multiple levels of bombs, like if you had a work order and a work order, it'll show you all of that in, in here. But it's showing you your material, your plan time, your actual planned run minutes, right? Your variance, what you've completed, what your scrap quantity was. Then it goes into the materials, right? And it shows you the plan cost versus actual. Uh, it looks like I probably didn't... Uh, issue that, yeah, see, I didn't issue that, that's why. But if you had some sort of a variance, right, where you over issued materials to the work order because you had damages potentially, um, that would show up. And then uh, you're gonna get your total cost, total variance at the bottom. And you can pick out an item here. I found that this didn't really help uh, or work all that well. Um, 
Oh yeah, so that's a variance I would see if you can get that. I mean, it's a nice way, especially if you're doing a little bit of job shop stuff. I wouldn't say like completely job stop, job shop, but it does give you an idea where you are having fluctuations, especially in your labor and maybe potentially materials. Thank you.